Hi guys, this is Maki. For those of you learning this piece, and especially TMEA auditionees, this will be a complete breakdown and practice walkthrough of Popper 7. It's a lot to go through, so we're going to break it into three parts. This will be part one. Let's get started. <laughs> Two things before we begin. The first is that we're going to practice this thing with separate bows and only address the slurs at the very end because that's how you should learn this piece. Second, if you want to tackle this music, you have to be fluent in hand frames. So that's what we're going to address first before we play any of the music. So hand frames are just different finger spacing configurations that you can paste onto any part of the cello. In this piece, we're going to have four hand frames that are featured most of the time in thumb position and they are major, minor, phrygian, and extended. Other teachers might have different names for these, that's what I call them. So if you find the, if you place your thumb on the harmonic D here, counting up from the thumb, the major is whole step, whole step, half step, like a major scale. Minor is whole step, half step, whole step. Phrygian is half step, whole step, whole step, so the first finger is cramped next to the thumb. Extended is whole step, whole step, whole step, so it's like a major hand frame but with a extended three. An exercise that you can use to test whether you're comfortable with this is playing broken thirds up and down for every hand frame. So... Notice that my first two fingers are really curved. That's in order to allow my third finger to reach. You want all your fingers to reach the string at the same time. If you straighten your first two fingers at, out, uh, at all, you won't be able to reach the third finger. This is really important to be able to achieve this. Once you're comfortable with that, do it in other positions. <laughs> on the cello. When you're comfortable and can do that, then you're ready for the next step. Let's get into the music. First four bars, just a few things to point out. This C sharp, don't reach for the C sharp with your pinky. Shift to it, then extend the first finger back. Thumb is with the second finger. For these last three notes of this arpeggio, just get them by replacing the pinky with the thumb, make a major hand frame, one and three, and then replace three with thumb, harmonic is right there. Okay, measure five, kind of gnarly, so what we're going to do is identify the hand frame, then use a finger replacement to shift to the next hand frame and get the notes that way. So you can start and stop the video as you go. So. I'm just going to go through these one by one. The first is a major hand frame. Next, I'm going to replace third finger with thumb and turn into an extended hand frame. So if I check on the D string, next, no shift, just a Phrygian hand frame. Next, replace two with thumb, do a major hand frame. Again, you can check on the D string if you want. Next, for measure seven, you're gonna pivot to a minor hand frame on the E. So. Then replace third finger with thumb, minor hand frame. Replace thumb with third finger, 
Phrygian. Replace thumb with second finger. This is just half step, so I don't really call it a hand frame. Replace third finger with thumb extended. Replace thumb with third finger. No particular hand frame, but you can call it major or minor. Replace thumb with second finger. This is minor hand frame. Replace third finger with thumb. This is a major. And then you're just going to shift down to a C natural into a minor hand frame. I'm going to skip the next section. Uh, I know the music says some 1-1-2-2 one, one, two, two business. I usually just finger 2-1. Uh, it's easier for me, but you can do uh, what your teacher tells you to. The next section, starting from uh, measure, let's say 12. Replace thumb with second finger into a minor hand frame. Replace thumb with second finger into an extended hand frame. Then... That's it for there. We're going to repeat this process for measure 18. Replace fourth finger with thumb into a major hand frame. Replace third finger with thumb into a major hand frame. The next two measures are the exact same thing, just a half step higher. Just do the same finger replacements. Now, measure 21. We have a Phrygian hand frame. Replace thumb with second finger in a major hand frame. Replace thumb with second finger in a major hand frame. That first position. Now let's skip to the very end first. So starting from measure 33, we have... So this is the last one, two, three, four. Four measures is in major hand frame. Replace second finger with thumb into a Phrygian hand frame. Replace second finger with thumb into a minor hand frame. Replace third finger with thumb into a major hand frame. One last thing for this video, we'll get to the other spots uh, in the next one. You have to make sure while you're shifting or finger replacing that your thumb doesn't move around. Your thumb is the foundation of the frame and is attached to your wrist. You can think of it as a block. So when you're... I hope you can see that my thumb more or less stays in the same shape, and the fingers are what react and move around in relationship to it. If you have an anchor, you have a frame of reference, and then you can base your hand frame from it. You can also practice shifting uh, from hand frame to hand frame with just your thumb, so you know the exact distance, and then place your fingers after. So that's it for this one. Uh, we'll get back to the other spots in the next. Good luck.